I'm joined today by Dr. Pamela Templar, who's coming to present a program here at the library on Tuesday, October 29th at 7 o'clock. The title of the program is The Effect of Climate Change on New England's Forests. Pam, thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, we obviously have had a pretty horrifically hot and tumultuous summer. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen things all over the globe where people have been experiencing just some pretty extreme weather patterns, but you're doing some deeper research uh, when you come and talk to us here uh, later this month. So tell me a little bit about uh, your, you know, how did you get into this? Was it weather impacted? Did you get a sunburn once and say, I got to study what the sun is doing to us? Or how did you, you know, what was the first spark? Sure. Great question. Um, well, I grew up in California, especially in Los Angeles, where it's quite warm in the summertime. Mm. Um, I wasn't thinking much about snow, um, yeah. which is what a lot of our research in my group is about these days. And so when I moved to Boston a number of years ago, I knew I wanted to better understand how our local forests work. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested in trees and how they function, because um, forests are wonderful ecosystems. And as you and many people know, snow is a big component of our local landscape, and I mm. knew it was changing. And so by just going on walks in the woods and noticing that winters are changing and talking to folks who grew up here and hearing from them that their backyards are changing in terms of how much snow is on the ground each year. It got me really interested in trying to link them up to each other. Huh. And so you were doing this as an undergrad before you, when they had it, when did this first hit? Oh, good question. So yeah. I first started studying forests when I was an undergraduate. Okay. Um, I started college in U University of California, Santa Cruz. Okay. Um, Not where a bad I, place to be. Go banana slugs. Exactly. Yeah. It's really beautiful place. Yeah. Um, and there I thought I would be a music major and I shifted all over the uh -huh. place until one day I was in one of my general education classes. It was an ecology class and we were sitting in a circle in the woods mm -hmm. during one of our sections, our discussion sections, when suddenly it hit me, wow, you can make a living studying nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's when it really hit me that science and the knowledge we gained from it and the way we could connect with other people about it was really powerful. So that, I would say that was my first spark. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you went to doctoral, so you got a, you did studies beyond Santa Cruz. I did, yeah. Uh, so I went and I got my PhD at Cornell University. Okay. Um, studying forest ecosystems. So was that your first time studying forests in the east coming out? Or? Um, actually, I was an undergraduate first where I was in a program, it's known as the, uh, it's research experience for undergraduates. Okay. It's a wonderful program funded by the National Science Foundation mm. where undergraduates across our country can participate in hands-on research. It's okay. not just environmental science, it's physics, astronomy, anything you can imagine, even economics, humanities. Yeah. And it's a three-month experience where you get kind of like a PhD wrapped into one summer where okay. you develop a research question, conduct the research, and then present it at the end of summer. What so a great experience. It was amazing. Yeah. I came from Santa Cruz all the way to upstate New York for Okay. Summer. I had no idea was that in, it was. in Ithaca and up that way? Not or? yet. That no? was in Dutchess County, New York. Oh, really? Uh, that's where I went to school. Oh, cool. in Vassar? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Did you like it? I did. I it's really enjoyed it beautiful there. Beautiful area. It is. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was only 10 miles from there. You were in, in Poughkeepsie Mil or in on Millbrook, that side? New York. In so Millbrook. Just 10 Very miles cool. yeah. outside of Poughkeepsie. We're going to bore everybody else. We could talk about the yeah. Hudson Valley for a while. <laughs> sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but such a beautiful area. It really is, yeah. But that was my first, I'd say, hands on in the woods on the East Coast, but I got the bug. Yeah. Very cool. And then you came out to, to Ithaca and spent did a doctorate degree there. Exactly, oh, yeah. Wow. So and then you went back to Berkeley? Or? I did. Yeah. I like to go back and forth. So then I went back to Berkeley for my postdoc. Um, and there I worked mostly, funny, um, in tropical forests of Puerto Rico. Okay. <laughs> so I wow. like to travel. So I would go Because you forth. had enough snow for a little while, huh? Exactly. <laughs> right. I need warmth. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was wonderful to work in the tropics. Oh. You know, very different environment. But still, the trees are very important there as well. Absolutely. So that was great. And then moved here to Boston. Um, and really trying to understand our local forests, like I said. So when you study, I mean, I know when people talk about forests, there's a lot more than just trees that make mm -hmm. up a forest. We're not just yeah. running tree farms. <laughs> um, are you studying really just looking at trees as indicators for the health of the entire forest? Or where is your interest there? What are you actually studying? Sure. So we in our group at Boston University, we're really interested in forest ecosystems as okay. a whole. No. So really trying to understand how plants interact with soil microbes who interact with the soils and the air and waterways mm -hmm. because we know that trees and the organisms that live in forests can really serve as wonderful 
filters. Mm -hmm. So I think of our forests as natural filters, whether it's pulling air pollutants out of the sky, we measure that, whether it's pulling carbon dioxide out and sequestering it in their biomass, or taking up pollutants from soils, which means it doesn't get into our waterways. So we try to study everything from the insects in the soil to the insects up in the branches mm -hmm. um, to the functioning of the trees and the microbes inside them. So you're like a natural pulmonary scientist. <laughs> That's a great way to put Everybody it. He talks about trees, you know, forests being our lungs of the planet. So. Absolutely, and actually yeah. sometimes um, we measure what's known as transpiration or water uptake by the trees, and mm -hmm. to do that we literally take syringe needles and we poke them into the sapwood of the tree and oh. we can use that to monitor water uptake um, oh. and so it almost looks like we're putting an IV into the tree. <laughs> There's a lot of great analogies to human body. That's really rich. Body. Yeah. I know recently everybody's talking about the forests that are burning in the, in the yes. rainforest. Mm -hmm. um, do you have partners that are studying those forests and, and that impact? Do you have any kind of mm -hmm. insight about the research that you're doing here that we can use to, to help us you know, interpret what's happening there? Yeah, so I know forest ecologists around the globe are very concerned with disturbances to forests, whether it's the almost doubling of forest fires there this summer, mm -hmm. um, it's cutting in other parts of the world, um, things like that. So yes, I'm very concerned because Currently, or at least before the summer, the forests of the Amazon are known for being net carbon sinks, meaning they do a really good job pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And as many people know, they also produce a lot of the oxygen we breathe. Um, they also clean up our waterways because of the pollutants they take up. So yeah, I'm very concerned and hoping that some actions are actually going to have effects to reduce some of these forest fires. Yeah, certainly something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you noticed in the time that you've been studying the forests here in New England uh, any significant changes? I'd say the biggest changes are happening in winter time. So we yeah. know summers are getting warmer, yeah. heat waves are getting longer, more intense. Um, but especially in winter, one thing I've seen myself in the short time I've been here and in talking to people who rely on snow for their livelihoods, that the winter time is really changing quickly. Mm -hmm. So for example, ski resorts that rely on snow are seeing dramatic shifts where they're going from using the natural snowpack to having to make more snow. Maple mm -hmm. syrup producers, the conditions where trees make syrup in the middle of winter, it's getting earlier and earlier, and the concern is those conditions might disappear. Yeah. Um, and so certainly we have some years with a lot of snow. Everyone probably remembers Snowmageddon from a few years yeah. ago. That Who was really hear? intense. But if you look at the long-term trends, certainly the snow in winter is, we're just getting less of it, and it's covering the ground less so. I've done some traveling out west and mm -hmm. seen the effect of some beetles that have just yes. devastated some of the Rocky Mountains. I haven't mm -hmm. seen them as much here, but maybe that I'm just not in the same, in the right valleys or in the wrong valleys, perhaps. Is that something that we've experienced out, out here? Yes, we have. Yeah. It's just different. So out west, okay. typically, like if you're in the Colorado Rockies, you might see an entire mountainside just defoliated. It's um, devastating. Trees are dying. Yeah. Here we get that, but because we have really diverse forests, you, it's harder to see at the landscape scale. Mm. But certainly species like hemlock trees, we're going to lose completely because of the hemlock willy adelgid. Mm -hmm. um, and if you walk along creek beds where the hemlock willy adelgid hit, it looks like a mini Colorado with mm. all the trees dying. Yeah. Um, ash trees are expected to disappear from this region because of the emerald ash borer. I've certainly seen all the, the tattoos and everybody trying to raise awareness and keep people from transporting firewood exactly. so that they control that. Right, yeah. same reason why we limit the spread of wood because of Asian longhorn beetle concern mm. with, you know, sugar maple trees are such an iconic species in New England. People really want to preserve them and keep them healthy. Mm. So you might not see it, you know, just driving down the road, but certainly we're getting a huge shift in the tree species we have because mm. of these pest species that are coming in and spreading. Yeah. Well, that's really significant. I'm grateful that you're helping document and, and raise awareness about it. So thank you for doing your work and, well, and helping us all be aware, a greater aware of our surroundings. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. That's great. I really look forward to having you here uh, later this month. I look forward to being here. Thank you. Please do come and join us and learn more about the effect of climate change on New England's forests here on Tuesday, October 29th at 7 o'clock. I look forward to seeing you there.